This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Get seven days free plus 25% off an annual premium membership by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code on screen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Plain Bagel. I'm your host, Richard Coffin. We're back by very popular demand with investment analyst reviews, investing TikToks, part five. I know with the last one of these, I talked about how the investing TikTok space had sort of settled down uh, given that stocks stopped going up. Uh, but with the news coming out that Montana is banning TikTok, I want to make sure that we had at least one last hurrah uh, before there's possibly more banning in the United States. Now, for those of you new to the channel, welcome. As I mentioned, my name is Richard. I'm a registered portfolio manager with my CFA and CFP designations. I research stocks for a living. And today I'll be going through some questionable finance TikToks. As I mentioned before, there is good finance content in the TikTok space uh, that provide helpful tips. But there's also a lot of junk you have to really sort through to get to that kind of stuff where people are either trying to sell you something uh, or just kind of providing reckless advice. In fact, as an example of this, in our last video, we talked about a TikTok where a guy went over an NVIDIA covered call strategy and how you could use it to retire early, which given the recent run up of the NVIDIA stock would have done pretty terribly for you. So just an example of how this kind of stuff, if you aren't careful, can really blow up in your face. But without further ado, let's, uh, let's, Let's watch some TikToks. I'm not gonna go buy Google stock. You know why? Because they don't pay a dividend every month. I'm not gonna buy AT&T stock. AT&T pays a dividend every quarter. When do they collect their payment? Every month, man. Can you imagine calling AT&T and say, dude, we wanna pay you every quarter like you pay your dividends. That's how important monthly cash flow is. Do you understand that? They pay their dividends to investors every quarter. They collect checks every month. The difference between those 89 days makes them hundreds of millions of dollars. The Bank of America, Northern Trust right here, will lend me money to buy an apartment deal, but they won't lend me money to buy their own stock. Think about that. They will not lend me money to buy Bitcoin. They won't even lend me money to buy a Bank of America stock. So what do they believe in? Cash flow, man. Any asset that generates cash flow into the future is going to be worth more money. What do I invest in? Y'all see where I'm putting all my money. That's all I talk about all the time because I know it's going to be there. Wait, where does he put his money? Passive guac. Fascinating. Thank you, Grant Cardone. So a few things to clear up. Firstly, banks do lend you money to, to buy stock. It's done through something called a, a margin account. It's just, you know, different than taking out a mortgage, for example. Secondly, the point about quarterly versus monthly dividends is, is a really weird one because if a company does make hundreds of millions of dollars by say delaying that payment to quarterly and earning interest on, on the time difference, great. Uh, why? Because you are the owner of that company. It quite literally benefits you as a shareholder for the company that you own to make money. And finally, on the topic of Google not paying a dividend, you know, there are people who focus on dividend paying stocks because it does provide sort of a more predictable source of return. And some people believe that it keeps management more diligent having this obligation to pay to its shareholders. But just because a company doesn't pay a dividend doesn't mean that it's not worth investing in. And there's actually a lot of interesting theory and, and research about the irrelevance of a dividend, about how investors can mimic a dividend with non-dividend paying stocks if they really want that continual income. But let's explain it with a really simple example. Imagine that you are a business owner with a corner store and in your first year of operation, you make a million dollars of profit. You now have one of two options. You can either pay out that million dollars as a dividend, you know, take it and, and pocket it yourself, or you can leave it within the company and, you know, hold it in cash or reinvest it into the business. Regardless of whether you keep the money in the business or take it yourself, however, it, it still benefits you. You know, if you were to turn around and, and sell that business immediately after making that million dollars and keeping it within the company, you would be able to sell it for what it was worth plus a million dollars of cash because the value of that company is now a million dollars more. What really matters here is whether the company that keeps the dividend is able to reinvest it and earn a stronger return than you would be able to earn by taking the dividend and say, putting it elsewhere yourself. And companies like Google, for example, have phenomenal track records when it comes to their reinvestment of the money they make. Uh, so it's not really a concern that they haven't paid a dividend because they've earned a very strong historical return on their investments. Now there are investors who still prefer dividend paying stocks because again, it's more predictable uh, and you know can be seen as more stable than capital gains, which can fluctuate based on public sentiment. So th there are, you know, there are valid points there, but theoretically anyway, it doesn't really matter if a company pays a dividend or not. This is how I got ChatGPT to code a trading bot that's over 2000% yeah. <laughs> profit. I knew this one was coming. 
And I'm serious, these stats are insane. First, I went to ChatGPT and I asked, if you had to create a trading bot, how would you do it? So I plugged this in and to my astonishment, it started coding it right in front of my eyes. Yep, and this code is updated for PineScript version five. So let's go ahead and copy it. Head over to TradingView and open a blank script, paste it all in and let's name it AI Trading Bot. Save it and hit add to chart. And there you have it. This looks like it caught a 12% trade over here as the markets were crashing. And over here, it looks like it caught a massive short again. This was another 13% trade. This can run while I'm away from my keyboard so I don't have to constantly watch the charts. And you'll have a huge leg up on other people because you won't have to wait till the next bull market to start profiting on crypto again. So definitely from a coding standpoint, super impressive that you can just type in a prompt and it will code something for you. You know, I'm sure there'll be a lot of use cases for that moving forward. But when it comes to building a trading bot or an investment model using this sort of, of you know, approach, it's not really anything new. Sure, it does reduce the barrier to entry for building these models and giving people access to things like algorithmic trading, whatever have you, but algorithmic trading has existed for quite some time. There are plenty of hedge funds that already have their own AI models that you know might not be ChatGPT, but already apply things like machine learning and whatever have you to continually improve their models and, and try to earn better returns with mixed results. So certainly this is not a revolutionary hack for beating the market. And the reason why it's so difficult to try and build a model that will you know, consistently beat the stock market is that the variables, the relationships between variables and how they all ultimately influence stock prices tends to all be continually changing. In fact, having spoken to a number of quantitative analysts who do this stuff for a living, things like machine learning and building AI models to trade for hedge funds and whatever have you, when they do build a successful model, it tends to be a marginal return at best and the opportunity tends to be fleeting, where even after a few days, for example, it no longer works. So fortunately, the day of us all being able to retire with a AI bot trading for us in the background and making us uh, crazy amounts of money are, is likely still far in the future. And you have to take even this TikTok with a grain of salt. You know, the returns are, are very much cherry picked. We aren't given a, an overview of how this thing performed, just kind of very specific examples, which is uh, far from being enough to, to judge whether it's good at doing what they claim it does. If there's one crypto video you need to watch today, this is that one. When I first heard this, it blew my mind and motivated me like crazy to make money in crypto. All you need is three 10X trades. So you need to 10 times your money three times. You start with 1,000, you hit a 10X trade, you're at 10,000. You hit one more 10X trade, it's the same thing, now you're at 100,000, right? Then you hit a 10X and you're at a million. 10Xs happen very frequently in crypto. They happen all the time. People 10X their money in crypto all the time, but they also lose a lot of money. The only thing stopping someone from doing this 10X, 10X, 10X is patience and your emotions. So be patient, look for those 10Xs, and you can really make this happen in your life. That's a... Uh... It's all between you and, and a cheeky 100,000% return is is your emotions, uh, you know, just, just your mindset. I don't think 10Xs are as common as he's really implying here. You know, maybe for people who make cryptocurrencies since they have a very low starting point. Uh, but let's just pretend as an example that your odds of hitting a cryptocurrency that is going to 10X is about 2% or one in 50 cryptocurrencies are going to see the skyrocketing return. To perfectly pick three successive 10X cryptocurrencies, your odds are 0.0008% or about one in 125,000. And that's with a pretty generous probability assumption. You know, Bitcoin, for example, which many view as being the most successful cryptocurrency out there, saw roughly a 10x return over the past decade, and that required getting in before this sort of mainstream crypto boom that we've seen. So, you know, achieving this results means replicating that sort of trade three times. Good luck. So three 10x returns sounds very good on paper and, you know, sounds feasible given that we've seen cryptocurrencies 10x in the past, uh, but we tend to hang on to those outlier stories of these huge successes and, and believe it to be representative when that really isn't the case. Trying to get these sort of lottery-like returns in the space of stocks and cryptocurrencies really does come with lottery-like risks. So you have to be careful chasing these sorts of, of you know, high figures. 
at the top three penny stocks to buy now. And for everybody that doesn't get in, I believe many people are going to regret it. This stock right here is number one. It went up over 10,900% today. And everybody inside of my private community got in early because all I do is call bangers because I am the best penny stock caller in the game. And if you wanna join my private community, you know where to go and you know what to click. I got two more runners for you in this video. Now for everybody wondering guys, I do not trade big cap stocks because it's a lie because all they do is go up five to 10% year over year. And if you're only investing a small amount of money, you'll never get rich by only getting five to 10% every single year. This is stock number two right here, ticker symbol SRNW. When the narrative comes back around to this stock, I think it's going to absolutely explode. And then the third stock is this one right here, WNFT. Well, at least he has his confidence. You know, sure, large cap companies don't have as much potential to, you know, say quadruple your money as a penny stock because it's a lot harder to, say, double a million dollars than to double a penny. But that's not reason enough to, to switch to a penny stock strategy. It's a very volatile and, and high risk area as uh, you can hopefully see. And like I mentioned before, it really is like playing the lottery. You know, sure there are people who, who hit the lottery, but for every person who does hit the lottery, there are naturally thousands, if not millions of others who didn't and, and lost all the money they put in. So much more responsible to, to pursue a, a diligent investment strategy, even if you only get five to 10% and focusing on, on other ways that you can sort of bolster your performance, whether that be earning a higher income or increasing your saving rate by decreasing expenses. Those are much more reliable strategies for ending up with, with a good amount of, of money in your name than trying to pursue these crazy returns in the stock market. It just isn't likely to see that kind of performance. Recession is coming in 2023. Here's why you need to be excited. Many believe that the Federal Reserve has triggered a recession that will happen later this year, where economic activity is going to decline considerably. Here's a snapshot of recessions over the past 80 years. In most cases, they only last about a year. In these instances, unemployment was as high as 15%. If a recession does happen to the real economy, not talking about the stock market, that could actually be good news for investors in the long term. If you look at the stock market as a whole, recessions have always been a buying opportunity in the long term. Bull markets have always been much larger and longer than bear markets. It's a big mistake to sell out of all of your stocks and time the market. If you want to learn more about investing, make sure to follow Stock Dads and check out my other videos. So not an overly offensive TikTok and, you know, can generally agree that you shouldn't sell your stocks just because a recession is coming and that, you know, you can make money by buying cheap stocks. Uh, but there's a sort of false equivalency throughout the TikTok and it's actually something he hits on earlier on, which is that the stock market and the economy are not the same thing. So a recession and a bear market do not necessarily occur at the same time. It is true that recessions tend to be accompanied with a downturn in stock prices, uh, but bear markets historically have happened before recessions in some cases, after the fact, and in a handful of examples, not at all. So just because you're going to have a recession doesn't necessarily mean that you can predict where stocks are going to go. And it's actually a very weak indicator for stock market returns. And it's all without even getting to the statement that a recession is coming in 2023. We just can't predict that sort of stuff. You know, there are a lot of negative variables, but you know, economists and analysts have been very awful at being able to predict when a recession is going to occur. Uh, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to base your investment strategy off that kind of thing. So again, not really bad advice per se, but uh, some points to clarify. Let me show you how I turned my initial $300 investment into well over six figures in a span of two years by simply doing compound trading. So if you started with $300 and you grew at 2% every single day for 260 days. 2%, you, it used to just be 1% a day. It's inflation, I guess. You're gonna end up with over $11,000 in your trading account. And I know you're like, okay, but that's not six figures. Let's take that initial investment plus the gains that we made in year one and reinvest it for a second year. So we took that 11,000, almost 12,000, and we throw it back in to compound it again for a second year. We don't take out any of our profits and we keep trading for 2% every single day. The second year, we end up with over six figures. That's over 400K compounded into your trading account. And you're probably sitting there like, okay, that's cool, but I have no idea how to trade, like zero knowledge, ground level beginner. There are softwares out there that you can leverage to actually give you those type of results being a complete beginner having zero knowledge in the financial markets. No, there aren't. Now, here's the harsh reality of compound trading. 90% of you are not gonna be strict enough to hold yourself accountable to your trading plan before you're able to see those gains and those profits in that account. 
And eventually you're gonna wanna pull that money out before your two years is over. But if you think that you're disciplined enough and you're willing to stick to a trading plan that you build for yourself, or you want access to my Tuesday trading call where we take trades together, mark up the charts together, I show you how to utilize the softwares, shoot me a message on Instagram and drop your questions. It's such a tiresome out for these gurus is, you know, it's not that my strategy doesn't work and, and that's why you didn't make all this crazy return. It's that you're not disciplined enough. It's your fault. <laughs> Even if you did exactly what I told you, you just, you didn't manifest hard enough. Anyway, probably goes without saying, but turning $300 into six figures, not a reasonable expectation. It's just shy of 4,000% a year. And when you see tall claims like this, it really is important to pay attention to what the person is doing relative to what they're saying. You know, if they claim they can make these significant returns in the market, uh, but you know, they're turning around and, and selling a discord trading group or a course or whatever have you, then they don't really have faith in that thing because otherwise they would just do that thing full time and, and make a good amount of money doing so. Instead, they're transferring the risk of this trading strategy onto you, cashing out via this, this course payment, uh, you know, just talking up its, its capabilities, but obviously not believing in it. And it's this kind of stuff that's really given TikTok its bad reputation. You know, a lot of salesmen and people trying to grift you and, and scam you, uh, making these tall claims with really nothing to back it. I don't know how you guys could even live on that number. If I made 400 grand a year, I would be embarrassed with myself as a husband, a father, basically as a human being. 400 grand, how do you make sense of $35,000 a month? You have not done the math because you cannot live on 400 grand a year. Anybody can make 400 grand a year. All you gotta do is show up. Don't ever feel embarrassed about how much money you make. We're all at different stages of our life, of our career, face different expenses, and you know it certainly helps to make more money. Uh, but you are more than your salary and, you know, meeting your financial needs, surprise, uh, doesn't necessitate nearly half a million dollars. So don't let someone like this make you feel bad for, for not making this amount of money. Uh, you're doing fine. Take it from me, someone who doesn't even make $400,000 a year. Anyway, I think we'll stop it there. Thank you for joining me for part five of Investment Analyst Reviews Investing TikToks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, before I sign off, I do want to give a quick thank you to our sponsor, Blinkist. If you're looking for alternatives to your TikTok education, books are a great resource. There's a lot of fantastic stuff out there by incredible and, and notable people. But speaking for myself, there are a lot of books that I don't think I'll have time to get to. You know, I have a very long list of, of two reads in the investing in economic space. There are other subjects I like to get exposure to, which is why I quite like Blinkist's offering. They're an app that summarizes nonfiction books where you can read or listen to the summaries in typically under 15 minutes. And they cover a whole range of subjects, not just money and investments, but also health, philosophy, all kinds of stuff. My goal this year has been to become a better writer and to read more about the history of the stock market, which led me to Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations, which if you aren't familiar, is seen as sort of laying the groundwork for a lot of modern economics. In fact, one of the blanks, The Invisible Hand at Work, talks about this mechanism that many economists still refer to today about how markets tend to be self-correcting, even as participants act in their own self-interest. And the best part of Blinkist is a relatively new feature they have called Blinkist Spaces, where you can now create a space with friends and family for recommending and discussing titles. With the awesome thing being that any title shared in the space can be accessed by any member of that space, regardless of whether they have a premium subscription or not. So if you'd like to explore a few titles yourself, you can get seven days free plus 25% off Blinkist annual premium by using my promo link in the description or scanning the QR code on screen. So thank you Blinkist and thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hopefully learned something along the way. If you did, please do make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It does help the channel tremendously and let me know what else you would like me to review. Movies, books, I've really enjoyed going over content and giving two cents and people seem to enjoy it. So win-win. Thanks again for joining. And as always, be safe out there.